Welcome, you've made it to the last step of this model project. So here, we are not interested so much in P, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're interested in the sector that you shade in that represents the angle A. So as A increases, so does the size of our shaded sector. And then when we pass 2 pi, we get a double shading all the way up to 4 pi. Now it took me about 13 equations to write that. And it's so I, I did that's pretty complex. And once you, I'll show you how to write it in the first quadrant, and then you can extrapolate to get the equations for the other quadrants. But I want to point out that you can actually do it in one equation using polar coordinates, which is something we don't cover right now. But if you really want to know how that works, let me know, and I'll send you the solution with one equation. We're going to use equations of circles and the tangent equation, linear equations, and put all these things together to get this to work. So let's do that. All right, so if we wanted to get a sector, we need a circle. So I'm going to type in x squared plus y squared just to get started and give it a radius of 1. But I want to shade it in. How do I shade in? I use inequalities. Now if I cut up this shaded circle, I know that I can get sectors. But how do I define that sector? I'm thinking here, Q is actually at pi over 4 radians. Let's turn um, with an A as at pi over 4, so that's determining the location of Q. So here, at pi over 4 radians, hmm, if we had a line right here, we can define this sector, this slice right here. It would be cut by that line. So all we need is the slope of that line. And what is the slope of that line? Well, slope is rise over run. And fortunately, we're looking at one of the points at the origin, so that makes it a little bit easier. The rise of point Q is the height of point Q. It's 2 sine of A over the run of Q, which is run of this line, which is the x value of Q, which is twice the cosine of A. So it's rise twice sine of A over run 2 cosine of A. 2 sine of A over 2 cosine of A. That's just, what is that? Well, the 2's cancel. It's sine over cosine. And that is tangent. The slope of this line is the tangent. So y equals the tangent of A. I'm going to put that in parentheses so Desmos understands that I want that as the slope, times x. And there's our linear function. Now, as you increase a, you can see that this line will travel and help you define the arc that you're looking for. Now, the shading of this, I thought, was pretty tricky. Because here we've got a circle set up. We'll just copy and paste that. In the first quadrant, though, and I guess, you know, even before we do that, sorry, let's cut this tangent line, this linear line with the slope of the tangent. We want it to go from 0 up to this point right here, and we want it to do that for all values of a. So it matters sometimes this point, let's, we'll call it q1, sometimes this point right here will be below o, sometimes it'll be above o, we want to be careful with that. So here we can define that point as, this is the point in this circle. Well, that's a circle with a radius of 1, so it's just uh, the cosine of a, comma, sine of a, cosine of a, sine of a, and we can call that q1. So I want to define this line from whichever is smaller, the minimum 0 or the cosine of a, and I want to graph the domain, restrict the domain, up to the max of whatever is bigger, 0 or the cosine of a. This is similar to what we did in other parts of this project right here. So now I've got a segment, and when q sub 1 is less than o, right, when it's smaller, it starts at that point. When it's bigger, it ends at that point. So it's always cutting the segment appropriately. And it's disappearing here. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, I guess we could divide a little vertical line in there but you'll see why it doesn't matter in a moment. So, okay, we've got this set up. It's now moving, it's undefined at certain points, but that won't matter, and you'll see why in a moment. And now in the first quadrant, I'm going to redefine the circle. I'll leave this original circle up there as a template. And I want to just graph the circle, but I want to graph, let's say, only points above y. If I do that, I start to restrict the range. Let's say y is bigger than zero. That would give me a semicircle above, but I don't want it just above zero. I also want it less than the tangent line. So less than the tangent of A, right? But I want it to be as a line, so the tangent of A times X. 
So it's below the line and above the x-axis. And you can see that this works. However, when we get to the second quadrant, it's confused, right? And that's where I started to get other equations in there as well. So I, I use about 11 equations, maybe uh, so about 12, 13 equations to get this set up, but you might find a better way. I needed different versions of this equation for each quadrant. And I need to redefine it based on the value of A. That's where all the equations come from. It's just this thing repeated over and over and over again with different range or domain restrictions. All right, so good luck. I hope that helps.